prostate cancer affects one in every eight men. That's a lot. And what many people don't realize is that it's twice as common in black men, affecting one in four. It's hard to know what to do with statistics like this, so sometimes it can be helpful to hear from people with personal experience. You might have heard in the news this week about Sir Chris Hoy, a British sporting hero. Team GB Olympic champion Sir Chris Hoy has revealed that his cancer is terminal. His incredible six Olympic gold medals in cycling means that he's become a household name. But recently he's opened up about taking on a very different challenge, raising awareness about prostate cancer following his own diagnosis. All your thoughts, all the, wait a minute, what about this, what about this, everything rushes, it's almost like your life is flashing before your eyes in that moment. Um, and it's, it does feel like this, this isn't real. You, just, you feel like you want to get out. You feel like you're a caged animal. You want to get out of that, that consulting room and get away from the hospital and run away from it all. But you realize you can't outrun this. This is, this is within you. And this is just the first step of the process of acceptance. He's called on the NHS to offer more testing for prostate cancer with the aim of catching cases earlier and potentially saving lives. I would like to see, first of all, more tests, PSA tests. It's just a blood test. You go to your doctor, you say, can I get a PSA test? It's not painful, it's not awkward. There's nothing difficult about it. You know, it, it, it's logical to me that why would you not just get the test a little bit earlier, catch it before you need to have any major treatment. To me, it seems a, a no-brainer, you know, why, why would they not? His story is personal, but it's a reflection of a larger question of how we test for prostate cancer today. Currently, the main test we have for prostate cancer is the PSA test. It's a simple blood test done in the same way you have any other blood test done. And it's measuring this protein produced by the prostate gland. The test sounds useful in theory. Elevated PSA levels can indicate prostate cancer. But, and this is the tricky bit, the test isn't perfect for a number of reasons. Firstly, PSA levels can rise for reasons other than cancer. Age, inflammation, infection, and benign prostate enlargement can all elevate PSA levels. Even cycling or having sex can lead to a temporary rise. And we call these false positive results, meaning that a high level looks worrying, and looks like you have cancer, but actually you don't and 75% of men with a raised PSA don't actually have prostate cancer. And that's a really big number, especially when you think of doing these tests on every single man in the country. And that's why we don't do that. And you might think, well, it's worth taking that risk. It's worth just checking. But the problem is that when you get a high result, this leads to a cascade of follow-up tests, which often involves invasive procedures like biopsies. And biopsies can be uncomfortable, and they're not without risks of their own, including infection and bleeding. Not to mention the incredible emotional toll that this will take, the days and weeks that you're waiting, expecting the worst news which turns out not to be the case at all. But it also leads to another issue, overdiagnosis. Because when men undergo PSA testing and they get all of those follow-up tests, some might end up diagnosed with a cancer that's so small and slow growing that's unlikely to actually cause any symptoms or even affect their lifespan. And some of these less aggressive types of prostate cancer don't even require treatment for that reason. But once a cancer diagnosis is made, it can be really difficult for you to just feel comfortable with watching and waiting, or what we call active surveillance. Instead, many men end up opting for treatments like surgery or radiation to treat that slow-growing cancer anyway. And those, of course, come with side effects of their own, things like incontinence and erectile dysfunction. But that's not the only flaw with the PSA test, because in some fast-growing, aggressive prostate cancers, the PSA actually looks normal, so they will be falsely reassured that they don't have cancer when actually they do. And we call this a false negative result. And 15% of people with a normal PSA result actually do have cancer. And again, when you think about this on a population level, that's not a small number. So on the one hand, the PSA leads to lots of unnecessary tests because 75% of the time that positive result doesn't turn out to be cancer. And on the other hand, it can lead to false reassurance because 15% of normal tests can actually miss cancer. So you're probably there scratching your head thinking, if this test is so inaccurate, is it really the right tool for prostate cancer screening? And it's not. It's not accurate enough. And so doctors don't actually refer to it as a screening test for this reason. For any test to be considered a screening test, it has to fit a certain number of criteria, and the PSA does not. And it's for this reason why at present we do not make every single man take a PSA test. But if someone requests it, we talk them through its potential limitations and its flaws and make a decision together on whether they would like to check it or not.
Now, what I'm not saying here is that the test is useless because it does have a value. It helps us build up a picture of the risk in addition to two other things. And those things are the signs and the symptoms. So when I see a patient who has any symptom that may be suggestive of prostate cancer, I'll certainly offer a PSA test in addition to an examination of the prostate. And taking all three of these things into consideration helps to get a better idea of whether someone might have prostate cancer or not. But even so, we won't know for certain until we get more detailed tests. And at present, that means getting a biopsy and an MRI scan. But other, less invasive approaches are being explored right now. And one promising method is the multi-parametric MRI scan, which allows doctors to look at the prostate in more detail and assess whether there's likely to be a significant, potentially aggressive cancer. And this type of scan could reduce unnecessary biopsies and focus treatment on those who need it most. But the big issue at present is that these scans are expensive and require specialized equipment, which means they're not yet widely accessible. So Chris Hoy's call for more screening options comes at a time when prostate cancer awareness is growing, but the awareness alone is not enough. What we really need is precise screening tools that reduce the risk of false positives of overdiagnosis and overtreatment. And researchers are actively exploring things like biomarkers, genetic testing, and imaging techniques to develop better diagnostic tools. But these advancements are still in progress. There's also the question of access. In many healthcare systems, including the NHS, resources are limited. And offering advanced screening like a multi-parametric MRI for every man with an elevated PSA is not yet feasible. And this puts us in a tricky spot, balancing the goal of early detection with the risk of causing harm through unnecessary treatments. But there is hope that one day, hopefully soon, with enough funding and the use of AI, for example, we could have an effective screening test for prostate cancer. And while we're on the subject, let me just remind you of the signs and symptoms of prostate cancer. As I mentioned, the tricky thing is that it's often slow growing, so there may not be any symptoms at first, even for years. But as the tumour grows, it may press on and irritate the urethra, causing a partial blockage to the flow of urine. So prostate cancer symptoms may then develop and can include one or more of the following. A poor stream of urine, so it doesn't flow out as normal, but is slower and weaker or trickles out, meaning that it takes longer to empty your bladder. Hesitancy, meaning that it takes a while before you get going and urine actually starts to flow. Dribbling, which is where urine might trickle out after you've finished. Incontinence, where you leak urine unintentionally. Frequency, which is when you're passing urine more often than usual. Urgency, which is when you have a sudden urge to pass urine without much warning, or a sensation of not quite emptying your bladder, even though you've just been. But here's the thing, all of those above prostate cancer symptoms are common in older men. Most men who develop the above symptoms don't actually have prostate cancer, but they have a non-cancerous, benign, enlargement of the prostate. However, it is always best to have any new symptoms checked out by a doctor in case. Other symptoms can occur, such as pain at the base of the penis or passing blood occasionally. Uh, we wouldn't expect to see those symptoms with a benign prostate enlargement. And if the cancer spreads to other parts of the body, various other symptoms can also develop. So the most common site of cancer is to spread to the bones, especially in the pelvis, the lower spine and the hips. Any bones that are affected can become painful and tender. Sometimes, as in Chris Hoy's case, the first symptoms to develop are from these secondary tumours in the bone. As prostate cancer awareness grows, let's also remember that real progress means more than just awareness. It means investing in better screening methods, educating men on their options, and making informed decisions about treatment. Prostate cancer is a complex disease, and the journey to better screening is a complex one too. But with continued research and advocacy, we can hopefully move to a solution that helps more men without causing harm. I hope you found this video useful, and if so, feel free to share with others. You might also be interested in this video on why GPs are struggling to find jobs right now. Or maybe this video, where I talk about what it means to boost your immune system. And I'll catch you in the next video. See ya!